Hello, welcome back to the Trekway. Uh, I am Trev and he is Gray. Um, and we are back for another episode on Star Trek Lord Decks Season 5, Episode 5, titled Star Base 80. And just our thoughts in general on this one. Uh, right off the bat, the positive stuff, Gray. This was my favourite episode of the season so far. Yeah. Batshit crazy, pun intended, and and the best possible Lord Dex Soritos style. Your thoughts, good sir? I liked it a lot. I thought it was just totally off the wall, but it, but it was good. It was it was a good. For once in our life, we weren't following like a million different plot lines. They were yeah. all they were all on Starbase eighty, and we were following different groups of people. But it's not the same as you know, two t totally different plot lines. So I think their stronger shows are when they don't do that. When they follow two plot lines max, or even one, their episodes tend to be them. better. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And this would, yeah. would we, I, we were talking off the air, but both of us agree, this would have been an absolutely perfect Halloween episode. I mean, no two ways about it. Um, but it, yep. it was great, even down to the, the, the menacing music was great. Every time they show a, show a shot of Starbase Beatty, the the music we need to touch on that because so obviously without jumping too far ahead the premise of this episode in the title that we finally get to visit the dreaded starbase 80 that right. is like the backwater right. of the whole federation and they, they keep hearing about it and then the rumors it's not and good. this and that yeah it's about it's about like mariner was there uh, the alternate version of Freeman was there running it, so uh -huh. it's not a good place to be. Uh, they tried to go to any other star base, but like Deep Space Six is like six hundred is four hundred uh, years away or something. I'm thinking they heavily exaggerated that one, considering it only took it would only take Voyager seventy five years to go over from the Delta Quadrant, but the closest one is four hundred years away. So I was yeah. just going with it. I don't even care. Uh, it's not correct. Uh, so yeah, Starbase 80 is their best shout. Now, Mariner's freaking out because she remembers how bad it was. Like, please, let's go somewhere else. No, no, we have to go there because the their navigational array goes down. That's a problem because the it's the, the dolphins that run Cetacean Ops. Like, I thought you would have Cetacean Ops and then the actual computer nav as well. You'd have two systems. Mm. But uh, to have just the one system, unless this is unique to the California class, is a bit strange. Uh, but, you know, I'll go with it great. It doesn't matter. It got, it got us to Starbase 80. The two whales, not whales, the uh, two dolphins that are in there, yeah. um, they are infected somehow. Something's wrong with them, so they need to get a part to fix the navigational uh, array. That'll come back to as to what happened to them. But the first thing we see, Gray, is when we go to Starbase 80, the music is like, or here, I guess, not see, it was like something right out of, remember that Nebula in Star Trek 2, they're after Khan, yeah. where they're, they can't find each other? It was like that. I was yeah, like, this much. is bloody epic, overkill, but it was epic, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the music was just... And every time was... they would cut to a shot of the Starbase 80, they would, they would, the music would play again. Then it goes back inside, and it's normal. Then it goes back to the Starbase, and then it play the music again. Ah, but there were different variations of it. Like, so yeah, different. It yeah, wasn't exact yeah. same like tune no, or something. No, no, but it was no. in it was in that era, that kind of range, basically the kind of eerie kind of music, you know. Um, and that really helps. Like it really yeah. adds to the ambience because the thing is, Starbase eighty is a shithole. Yeah, if I be it, it really is. Like it's all old, timey wimey stuff. It's like the, the officer that meets them is in a. Enterprise era jumpsuit, which I like that by yeah, the way. When yeah. they've done Enterprise, it made sense for them because it was a practical uniform with pockets. Um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I actually think I remember was it Riker saying something about the pockets when he was, um, when they were on the, the very, very end of Enterprise when he came on. No, was it either the last episode, or the second, or last episode where Riker's watching the very last voyages of the NX Enterprise? Um, and he's he puts himself in place of the chef, but he's wearing the uniform at one point, and he's like, "God, I, but these things are great. They've got pockets in them. Our uniform has got pockets in them." And I think he says it to Deanna, De Deanna Troy as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, you see the uniforms great. Um, you see 
all the old technology there, like the old the old uh, the old com panels on the wall. The yeah. elevators, the lifts have the twist turn the handle mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, twist the handle and then tell it where you want to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know why they done that even in the sixties show. Why can yeah. they not just have a voice where you just say uh level such and such and it took you there? Well, you know, they're they're very button oriented back then. They didn't have touch screens and stuff. No, I you just, just say it. You just use your voice. You don't need no, to touch I, I anything. No, I agree, but I think they 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 were into the tactile kind of stuff more in the like they TOS. Were. Everybody was like flipping things and hitting things and well, yeah. that's what they knew back then. Is their yeah, uh, exactly. vision of the future? Um, yep. So no, that was a nice touch. The place is really, really run down. Now they need to get a chip for their navigational array to get back up running. And they keep getting the run around from the stadium. The stadium? Where did they get that from? The station? <laughs> Maybe there's that's a stadium enough. there as well. It's, it, is a, it is a weird uh, station. They're getting the run around. They're trying to find this engineer. And the engineer is basically going from one point to the next to the next. And they're uh-huh. like, come on, you're at it. They keep mo- to tell them to go somewhere else. But I feel sorry for that engineer, Gray, because he's, he admits at the end he was doing that kind of purpose because they are on so low down the the, 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 the situation with Starfleet that they will never get help. So he's literally having to almost bribe the Sunitos yeah. crew into helping them fix it. And uh-huh. that's what they do is they go along because they've got the fancy tricorders, as, 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 he, as he calls it. Um, but we have Star Trek zombies that have fin- finally. We have yeah. Star... What did you make of them, by the way? Do you think they've done it in a kind of cool way, that, a that way to make cool. sense? The only... The, the, I, I, I wasn't quite sure there was going to be zombies, but when I heard him open the communicator and you hear... On the other end, I'm going, ooh, zombies... <laughs> Yeah, but do you remember what uh, Boimler said? He went, nah, that's just, Billups has probably just had a bad burrito or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, fucking all the way. I, I liked how they did it. It was it was really good. It was just, they, they you know, they obviously were getting back and forth ahead, but, the, but there was a vi- virus of a certain kind or whatever, but, and, yeah. and at, everybody was, was contracting it through the comm badges. So it was funny when you, you see everybody just going, and they just, they hit their comm badge and the next second they're like, Whoa. <laughs> It it just made you a bit special, basically. This thing it just made you like kind of like zombies. You just wanted food, like your basic instincts. They weren't yeah. eating people, thankfully. Um, yeah. There was a corn dog, which I've had one of before when I went to the states. I do like them. They don't yeah. sell them outside the states, but yep. um, there's a corn dog vendor right beside the fusion reactor for the station, <laughs> just randomly like, uh, selling hot dogs. Yes, to attract all these zombies, and they're all like, "Ooh, corn dog!" and they're all going for them. But what was his name? Chad? No, Chad or yeah, I think it was, was I think it was Chad or something like that. Yeah, Chad the corn dog vendor came to the rescue, uh, and that was one of the 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 leader or whatever her name was said this. I I'm going to bring along a couple of weirdos to help with this, and he was one of them. Chad he was. With the corn dogs. Was uh, you you're right about the virus. It's basically when they at the start of the episode. They come back from this planet that's they've been down there swimming like doing sciencey stuff, and they're all still in their wetsuits and soaking wet and they've obviously picked up the virus then because the two dolphins joined them because water is their thing yep. um, and they've picked up this sentient virus or life form that inhabits the dolphins which then inhabits the crew and every time they use their comm badge it's transferred that way from person to person it's just a virus and right. they start making the zombie noises and they're touching and licking the walls and while that looked weird and was hilarious, it's because the fingers and the tongue was like the the hands of the virus of the life form. It was, it was yeah. reaching out. So it was silly, great, but it made sense. That it, this yeah. is the thing with Star Trek. Things like the musical episode didn't make sense. They tried to make these things make sense in a science way, and I can buy them. Yeah. But you've got to make them make sense. It's not like a batshit crazy TV. Well, it is, but. Again, they do that in a common sense kind of way as well, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Um, but they made it make sense. This virus was just this sentient life form. When they start talking to it, was just trying to prove to its superiors that it could do a lot better in its job. It was trying to stick it to the man, which was hilarious. Just a lot like this sentient life form, just going like, "I am the man. I am the boss. I can do this to its superiors." Um, and they basically are able to control it. They managed to fix up the station a little bit. 
but at the very end, the very end, poor uh, Marner, not Marner, Freeman, yeah, uh, and and uh, what's his name, the, the commander, forgot is it Ransom? Yeah, he is man. he is struggle. They're they're struggling to capture all the bats that were escaped. They said, no, no, we're going to help them out. We're not leave them in the lurch. Let my superior, right. my superior from the the mirror universe done. I'm going to help them out here. Uh, and there was a one massive big off bat at the end that they're trying yeah. to capture. Uh, yeah. There was a bonus thing to mention of when they're when they're going on before they got on to this A Star Base eighty because it doesn't have the advanced bio filters. They mm-hmm. have to do. Enter Star Trek Enterprise style decon chamber. That's what we saw in the trailer for the season. So they lather mm. themselves up in the gel, and of course Ransom puts it on. Like he's told not to slap on too much, but he slaps it on, puts it over his hair, and he's like, "Oh yeah, that's the stuff, man." Yeah. Gray and I were laughing quite a lot throughout this episode. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Me. He was addicted was... to this gel because throughout the episode he's using it for this or that, and then he's got yeah, it like yeah. on his mustache, and he's going like, "Oh yeah." But... And then, he, then they had to get the engineer's head, and he was stuck in a. He's like, "Here, get some gel." And he goes, "Wait, I got some gel for that." Let's tell me, he keeps doing this, pull this gel out, man. Like, the guy's yeah. obsessed with this stuff. <laughs> uh, but then at the end, the, the end, the, the sentient life form that was in the in the little the chamber thing, talking to yeah. him through the 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 comms, basically apologizes for being a dick. I mean, that was hilarious. Yeah. That is just. Oh, I see. Thing is, right. They beep all the F words in Lower Decks, right? But they mm. don't beep the word dick. Now, yeah, maybe, yeah. In the, uh, maybe in America, dick is not really considered that bad of a word. But here, it's 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 a bad word. You don't say that casually, that word dick. Probably. You know? it, it, it's worse for you, maybe, than... Now, over here, it's become a little more common. Not that you would just go running around saying it everywhere. Um, but it's a wee bit more common here, I guess. But mm-hmm. still, I was still surprised to see it. I mean, it, they did let that one go as opposed to other stuff, you know. But, uh, and again, the only disappointing thing I had in this episode is again, Tiana, Dr. Cat. We only see her for a second. She's a zombie cat all of a sudden. Yeah. And that's it. She hasn't said a word, a word of five episodes. Five episodes. Yeah. How can, how can you ignore, how can you ignore her character for five episodes? Well, this will tie into, what your um, score is? What score is for the episode? Mm-hmm. Then, Gray, considering Tiana not talking and whatnot, what would you give it out of ten and why? I got, I got to knock it down for a half a number number for ignoring her. I give it a, uh, give it a solid nine. I liked it. I thought it was pretty Great good. Great minds think alike. I'm also giving it a nine out of ten. Yeah, it wasn't not 100 percent perfect. It's uh, the the aim is always to get to ten, but. Almost every time you will fail because that is the perfect episode and that yeah. almost doesn't exist. Very rarely exists. Yeah. So nine out of ten, uh but for both of us, it was funny. It was back to its humorous self. There wasn't too many subplots. It was just right. one main plot really. Yeah, pretty I much. Yeah. yeah, which I prefer. Um it, because when there's too many plots, it's all over the place. It's it was, it was this... instead of being subplots, it was more it was more like reactionary to what it was going on. On the and main so plot, yeah. just, right. So they would follow different pieces of the crew in, in their experience of what they're doing. But they're all experiencing the same thing. They're 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 going through the thing with the zombie and whatever and repairs and it was also it all was part of the episode. As yeah. opposed to making a completely different, you know, subplot. Yeah. There are better uh, episodes, I... like we were saying, and better always have been when they don't go beyond max two subplots, you know, their episodes are, are better. And I would even, I'd have to go back and look at all the episodes again or whatever, but I'm almost willing to say that when they concentrated on one plot, they got to their nines and, and, a, and a 10 here and there. I mean, it really, yeah, they it really pro- they probably so. did. And they worked themselves back towards the undone their good work by putting in too many subplots. Yeah. yeah. Potentially. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was really it was my favorite episode of the season so far by yeah, by, by far actually very funny and they done it and like let's say the 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 Strange New Worlds episode with the singing mm-hmm. was horrific because they tried to make it make sense and I, yeah. I went they they were stretching there I was just about buying it but I was struggling the yeah. only funny bit of the episode was the Klingon uh, hip hop 
uh, <laughs> came. That was the only funny bit yeah, apart from that. Yeah. It was awful. So they made sense of this, and it was cool to see Starbase 80 finally. So well done, yeah. guys. Uh, yeah, that is us. We'll leave it for there. Short and sweet as always in this new take. Just right. our thoughts rather than a breakdown. Uh, we will again, of course, be back next week. But until then, uh, thank you, Mr. Gray. Uh, right. Thank you to the people. And we will uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Long and prosper. Cheers. <laughs>